Put it out the coop in the lot. Put it for a 12 for a swat. Pussing all the bells out the box. I just hit a leaf with the box. Had to put the stick in the box. What's up guys, so I just finished doing the bike for about 5-10 minutes and now I'm in the yoga room. I'm going to do some foam rolling, I'm going to do some you know, injury prevention, strengthening some of my adductors, I'm going to show you some of the exercises and I'm going to do also assistive uh, stretching using a strap that they have here so it's really nice that they have it. I also have one at home, you can use bands and there's a lot of other ways that you can use, you can use a towel at home. But I'm going to show you some of the stretches I do, some of the mobility stuff and then we're going to head to the field and get as many touches as possible because today is going to be a fitness day for my team training and I'm going to explain what we do later on and then show you what we did at the practice so if you guys you know want to get fit with me during the preseason you can do some of these exercises and I'm just going to let you know what you know, I think and what I do so hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in a little bit. So I decided to leave St. James just because St. James has a partnership with this professional rugby team called Old Glory and they had the field until 10.30 and I finished with my stretching around 9.30 and I was hoping they'd finish up early or have like at least a part of the field open to me but sadly they didn't. So I just decided to go to a field by my house and something about you know having an entire field to yourself just hits differently and I don't know if that's just me. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. But I just love like walking down and seeing nobody at the field and just having it all to myself. So, you know, that's like one of my favorite things is coming at a time when there's like nobody and just having that, you know, all that space to yourself so you can train something that, you know, I really enjoyed, you know, growing up. What I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be taking you guys through some of the technical drills I'm going to be doing before my team training. I just finished my first week of, you know, team training and I'm not going to lie. I was super tight and I think there's a couple factors that played a role into that is number one I think the weather it was super cold and windy and as you know the colder it is the longer it's going to take you to, for you to warm up properly and you should cool down so after my training I have about like a 45 minute drive back home so sitting down so I don't think that's going to really help me out so I try to form roll stretch when I get home and number two is like the time of training I've been training almost every single morning and now I'm training from 9 to 11 p.m. which is my body is like completely not used to so I think that's something I just need to get used to and another thing is like my sleep schedule is like I was falling asleep around like 10 30 10 45 now I'm falling asleep around like 12 30 1 a.m. so you know I gotta get used to that so I think after this week my body's gonna start to get you know more accustomed and adjusted to that you know schedule but I'm still gonna be doing you know uh, my morning trainings it's just that the intensity and the purpose are gonna be completely different and that's like something that you got to take account in is like once you start your team trainings like you shouldn't be doing like fitness you shouldn't be doing like heavy lifting or like high volume stuff like you gotta listen to your body make sure you know what you're doing is not gonna affect your team training because you don't want to perform bad in those because that's what's really important because coaches they don't want to see you tired and exhausted because they might not know that you're training in the morning and they probably don't care so making sure that you know you're putting 100 percent into your team trainings is really important because that's what's going to be you know the coach's decision like who's going to start and who they're going to pick for you know for traveling for the games so it's really important that these morning trainings are very light and that you're listening to your body if you don't have like anything important then I'm then maybe you can you know increase the intensity or you know you could do more drills or you can go lift but it really is like dependent on what you're doing at training how many days a week you are doing team trainings and if you have games on the weekend so there's a lot of factors that play into it but at the end of the day I like to listen to my body and see like how it feels so I feel really good but tonight I know I have fitness so making sure that you know I get a lot of touches on the ball and do as little as to like zero as much like you know running sprinting conditioning is like vital because I don't want to go into that conditioning you know being the last person I want to be the in the front I want to be doing the best so that's something to you know take into account is that once your team training starts once you you know start playing games 
listen to your body and try not to do over like do it because that's probably going to lead to some injuries and you know you want to avoid that at all costs but now i'm going to take you guys through some of the drills and i hope you guys enjoy the video all right guys so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be warming up on our foot to eye coordination and what i like to do is juggle with the tennis ball as you guys heard from me from several other videos i love using the tennis ball just to warm up and the reason why i like it so much is because once you transition from this to regular soccer ball it's going to be much easier with a tennis ball if you hit it with the wrong part or make one little mistake it's going to go flying the other direction so every single touch has to be on point or it's just going to go in whatever direction so it's going to be a lot harder so your focus has to be there so this is almost like warming up your brain and your touch so this is why i like starting off i like to do it for about five ten minutes and then i transition into the regular soccer ball and it's just much easier for me So now we're going to transition into our regular soccer ball. All right, guys. So after juggling with the tennis ball for five to 10 minutes, we're going to go transition now into the regular soccer ball. We're going to first start off with just laces juggling. And if you know you're making good contact with the ball, there's going to be no spin on it. So if you see like this, you're probably hitting it with your toes. If you're hitting it with your laces, it's going to make zero to little spin at all. So we're going to do this for about five minutes and then I want you to transition into each foot for about three minutes. So single foot, single right foot for three minutes. And then the next one you're going to do inside the foot for about five minutes and then outside the foot for about five minutes. And then I want you to go into a low high touch so low touch high touch 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 and then to end it off just have some fun to work on your first touch you're going to juggle the ball a couple times and you're going to kick it up and try to control it so if you want to challenge yourself kick the ball as high as you can and see if you can control it after that we're going to move into the ball mastery skills what's up guys so now we're going to go into the ball mastery skills and we're just going to start off with the first drill we're going to do each one for about 60 seconds so the first we're going to start off with is just inside taps just like this nice and light on those toes the next one we're going to go into is we're going to do some toe taps right here on the ball pumping our arms nice and light the third one we're going to do rollovers just like this nice and easy next one we're going to do we're going to do outside in outside in outside in outside in outside the foot inside foot outside the foot inside the foot next one we're going to do our drag backs boom drag 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 and as you get better and better Try to do it with your head up, trying to look at things. There's this app, it's called Column B. I'll leave it, uh, the name of the app in the corner. Download it, it's free. And we can do, set it up in front of you. It can, uh, it can have numbers and different colors pop up and you can call out those numbers and colors. And it's a great way to keep your brain thinking and multitask so that you can keep your head up and get better at that. So if you can dribble with your head up, you'll be able to see the whole field You'll be able to see your options, the defenders, the attackers. It'll be much easier. After we do the drag backs, we're going to move into our first one. That's going to involve the cone. So it's going to be drag, touch, pass, drag, touch, pass. Now left, drag, touch, pass, drag, touch, pass. Back, drag, touch, pass, drag, touch, pass, touch, pass. Just like that. After we do that one for 60 seconds, we're going to do almost like the same variation. But now it's a roll, drag, touch, pass roll drag touch pass roll drag touch pass roll drag touch pass roll drag touch pass after that we're going to go into a simple one that's not going to involve the cones so all you're going to do is open up nice little hop open up 
push the ball with the inside of the foot. Push, push, drag, drag, drag. Just like that. So the next one we're gonna do is just a nice easy figure eight. Just taking nice, small weighted touches, getting low as possible. Slight bend in those knees. Once you do that for six seconds, you're gonna switch directions. So go this way. Small touches, getting nice and low is gonna help you get around those cones. And that's gonna be the ball mastery. There's hundreds and hundreds of other different drills that you can do, but these are the ones that we're gonna be doing today. And now we're gonna go into more of our movement and we're gonna add some, a little bit more of uh, footwork and dribbling. What's up guys? So now we're gonna go into our first dribbling drill and it's just gonna be a straight line cone with a nice 10 yard acceleration. I set up about seven cones up, two feet apart. You can set up more or less, it's up to you. And it's pretty simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna start off just doing a nice easy outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. And you just wanna make sure you're nice and low because that's gonna help you take a better touch through. You're gonna accelerate here, get low around the cone, accelerate back. And now you gotta take a very nice weighted touch so you can set yourself up to go through these cones and then that's it. You're gonna do this as fast as you can for about you know three reps for three sets. So you're gonna go three times in a row as hard as you can, and then you're gonna take a break and you're gonna repeat that for another two sets. So in total, you're doing nine reps. So I really want you to focus on the quality first. If you're not gonna do it with good quality, there's no point of doing it. First, start off slow, and once you get the just, the just of it, then you can pick up the speed. And as you get more comfortable, more comfortable, start pushing yourself, and it's okay if you make a mistake. Just start over and go through it. This is the place to make mistakes. So it's fine if you make mistakes because this is gonna help you. So once you go into the game, you're not gonna make any mistakes or you're gonna re reduce those chances. So give this a go and then I'm gonna show you the next drill. All right guys, so we just finished a little bit of that dribbling drill. Now we're gonna move into our final drill. It's gonna be a little bit of dribbling with a little bit of finishing and nothing too stressful and nothing that's gonna get me too exhausted for a later training session tonight. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna set up same thing, about seven cones. You can have more or less, it's up to you. I have it along the 18 yard line. So in line, about one to two yards away from it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be dribbling through these cones and then I'm going to be taking a touch, setting myself up for a left foot shot. So for my team, I kind of figure out where I'm gonna be playing. I think I'm gonna be playing as a right back this season. So I wanna be able to work on taking it inside and being able to finish it with my left. And I wanna be comfortable with that. I wanna be able to, if I do end up getting the opportunity, I wanna put it in the back of the net every single time. And this is a drill I saw uh, Bayern Munich do. This is uh, Robin, if anybody knows him, one of the best wingers, honestly. One of the individual finishing drills that he was doing was actually he was, it was almost set up exactly like this. He would zigzag through, set himself up and finish because that's something he did so often in a game is that he would cut in with his left, beat one player, pretend he's about to shoot, take another touch and then finish far post or near. He was very deadly at doing that, and that is something you know I want to be good at. Even though I'm not a left foot player, I want to, that's why I really want to work on that, just being comfortable on using both feet. Because if given the opportunity, I want to put in the back of that and not into the forest and look like an idiot. So this is the last drill. I'm going to show you a couple of clips on how it's supposed to look, but I hope you guys enjoyed some of these drills. It's very short, but you can put as much time as you want into each drill. So at the end of it, you can be here at the field for, you know, up to, you know, 30 minutes or all the way up to two hours. So it depends on how much time you put into each drill. 
you could spend a lot of time on a lot of these drills so you know it might not seem like a lot of drills but the amount of effort you put into it it could be very tiring so and the thing that you have to realize is that you don't always have to do a lot of drills in your sessions you can keep it very simple and do only four main drills and that's still enough it all depends on how much focus and the intensity you're putting into the drill that's the main focus and if it's related to what you're doing in the game if you're doing stuff that's not going to help you i just i'd recommend it just put it off to another day or a day where you just kind of want to relax i think you know the training days or once you start going to the season you should be focusing on sharpening up the things that you need to work on this is going to be really helping me because this is something i'm going to be doing in the game and i just want to you know really sharpen up and making sure that you know i put it in the back of the net just work on my dribbling and setting myself up with that touch so i can give myself a good shot so thank you guys again i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see more of these type of you know these videos just comment down below i want to get as much feedback because i want to help you guys as much as I can and uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day it's a great day to get better let your light shine and I'll see you guys in the next video What's up guys so i just came back home from practice and i'm going to explain all the drills that we did tonight was mostly focusing on fitness and we did a little bit of possession with fitness basically everything everything today in today's session was you know had some type of fitness in it and uh, yeah it was pretty hard the first part i was able to use my running shoes which was really nice but now i'm going to shower and then i'm going to show you like so we wear this catapult player thing and I did a review on it. Um, but this is like, tra what it does, it tracks, you know, your top speed, the distance covered throughout training. And this could be used, you know, especially for the strength and conditioning coach on our team to see like, you know, how much we're traveling, you know, each session, making sure that, you know, we're running enough and, um, you know, we're really getting enough distance per practice because if you're not doing the same amount of distance that you should be in a game, it's going to be a lot harder to, you know, get accustomed to that. You're going to be exhausted because in a game, if you're playing 90 minutes, you're probably going to be doing, you know, covering up to like six, seven miles, depending on your position, of course. So, you know, having that data is super important. So this is why we have it. I also use my Apple Watch and I track my heart rate, just see, you know, where I'm at, making sure, you know, I'm not pushing myself, whether I need to take it easy the next day, but I definitely feel a lot better and don't feel as exhausted than I, than I did last week. And I can tell my body's already getting accustomed to the late night training, but now I'm gonna show you, you know, what I eat. So, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try real quick and show you. Too. So, see you guys in a little bit. That's just how we live Maybe that's all that we want